Hey y'all, it's me, Lynn Daniel, coming to you. It is Friday, March 10th, 2017. It is spring break. Started at the end of school today. And uh, so, <clears throat> whoa, y'all know my voice is still a little strained, but I have plenty of time to um, rest my voice, you know? So yesterday I made a video just kinda analyzing the story, the movie, Get Out. So if you haven't watched that video, please go back and view it. Comment, like it, thumbs up, thumbs down, if you will. You know, engage in conversation with one another on that video. Is from a Judeo-Christian perspective. And so today I wanted to come and talk a little bit about like um, why I am, why I don't celebrate my birthday anymore in the traditional Americanized way and why I am beginning to wean away from celebrating American holidays or any, any holidays pretty much. Now, let me just set a disclaimer. I am not a legalist. You know, I'm not saying that these things must be done or you're hell bound if you don't do them. I am not saying that I do them perfectly, but I am saying that I'm becoming more aware. Like the older I get, the more I'm interacting with truth or information that I previously did not have, I am gaining <clears throat> an understanding of Judeo-Christianity um, from the biblical viewpoint as from, I guess you would say like the first generation, the first century biblical viewpoint. I mean, to the best of my understanding, that's what I'm attempting to do, okay? Okay, so um, my niece was um, wishing me a happy birthday. And, um, I, you know, I, I let her know, well, thank you, but I don't celebrate my birthday like this. You know, announcing it on, on social media, for one, I don't do. And then, um, I don't know, I just don't do it like I used to. Now, I may have a cake, like I, I purchased myself a cake, but then I ended up tossing the cake because, um, and here's why. <clears throat> First off, the cake was nasty, okay? It was cute to look at, but it was nasty. Um, secondly, you know, I was nosing around on um one of one of my um favorite vlogs and blogs and i came across um a video about candle magic now i had heard about candle magic a few years back so when i first decided to move away from celebrating my birthday and it's been I think about 10 years ago is when I really made a conscious decision to stop announcing my birthday or celebrating it in the traditional manner. So around that frame of time is when I discovered that blowing out candles on a birthday cake is candle magic. It's a part of, it's a pagan ritual that uh, pagans do to request something from the God that they are praying to or for the, they're asking the universe or some source other than the Jehovah Jireh Elohim God of the Bible of Abraham Isaac and Jacob they're going to a different source other than that source for some things and they do it in candle through candle magic it is like one of the most elementary forms of ritualistic witchcraft is what I understand. 
Now, I just discovered through finding that video the other day that the candles that you buy in the store, the reason they have those colors that they are typically yellow, blue, green, red, or pink is because those colors represent the elements in nature. And I guess, I believe most pagans or maybe a branch of pagans, they worship the elements. They worship nature and the things that God created. They worship the creation. And just in the Bible, there is there is a scripture that says, and they will worship the creation instead of the creator. And so um, many pagans, and I, I'm not very familiar with their religion, and I really have no desire to become familiarized with their uh, religion, but I do understand that they worship the air, the earth, the fire, and the water. And so the yellow represents air, the green represents earth, blue represents water, and red represents fire. Pink is um, pink is red, just a derivation of red, okay? And so when we, you know, innocence is not like in the law. It says innocence or your, how is it phrased? Innocence does not uh, preclude you or excuse you from the law. Just because you're innocent or you're unaware that a law is being broken that doesn't excuse you. You are still guilty of the crime if you participate in it unknowingly. And so it's the same with us as Christians. And I guess I need to say that this video is really I'm speaking to Christians, um, people who really have a desire to follow Christ in their lives um, and who really do want to please God, who fear God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they really do want to please him. And so they seek to live their lives in a way that he will bless so that their lives are blessed, okay? So if you're not a Christian, this video is not meant to offend you in any way. And if you're a pagan, you know, it's not meant to offend you. It's just meant to inform my Christian brothers and sisters. So... The candle magic. So I can remember as a little girl having a birthday party, having a pointed hat on my head. And if you think back, if you're from my generation, you know, the kids would have the party hats and they would look like pointed dunce hats or pointed wizard hats. And they're literally wizard hats. So... The whole ritual, the birthday party ritual, is a ritual. And so even if you're ignorant of that, but you're doing it, you're guilty. And you're conjuring. And you're involved. And there, there are outcomes. And many times, as Christians, this is why we have ineffective prayer lives. We have a lot of unwanted things that occur in our families because we unknowingly participate in paganistic behaviors and they counteract our prayers and our efforts to walk in the power and authority of God's word. Now, God, his, his, the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost are God's sovereign um, tools or whatever, however we want to categorize them. So God's sovereignty, his mercy endureth forever. And he's able to protect us because he knows that we live in a fallen world. The world that we lived in, live in now is in a state of rebellion against God. And he understands that. And so as we are moving out from the world system, we're moving out of the matrix into his holy this, his holy ways, then his mercy endureth forever. 
you know, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So he protects us. Yet it is important for us as we develop and move forward in our walk and we gain understanding of these types of things, then we drop these types of things. We let them go out of our lives so that we can enjoy more victory and higher degrees of victory, power, and anointing in our lives. Um, and so when I discovered, like, the colors, that what they mean, you know, um, and then it made me think back that I, when, you know, you're in the store and you're looking at candle, birthday cake candles, you're looking at birthday cake decorations or whatever. And so, and they are those colors, they're yellow and they may be pale. So a pale yellow or a regular primary yellow, pale blue or primary blue, pale green or primary green, red or pink or primary red. Okay, and then even, you know, I was thinking once I discovered the colors and their meanings, I even thought of like, dang, well, those colors are considered primary color. I think um, um, yellow is yellow a secondary color. I think yellow may be a secondary color because yellow is blue and green mix. Primary colors are, I think, pure hues or tones without mixture. I don't know. I ain't no art teacher. I can't define it. But the whole point that I'm making is the birthday ritual is a ritual. And if you don't believe me, especially if you are of my peer group, go back and look at those pictures of when you were a child at birthday parties and see if you all have on those pointy hat looks looking like Harry Potter kids in a coven around a cake. Now there is also I, I heard that um there is a cake ritual as well. And the cakes and these rituals started in Europe back in I don't know the time frame, but many of these religions and these practices were going on prior to Christ, prior to the first century, in the BCE era before common era or before Christ era. So a lot of these practices have just been handed down and we just do them because they're tradition. And there is a scripture in the Bible that says the traditions of men make the power of God of non effect. Now that's sort of like a paraphrase, but that is what it is saying to us. The traditions that we hold on to nullify God's ability to impart high levels and high degrees of power in our day, in our lives, because we keep meddling in these traditions. So even like, for instance, okay, this thing right here, Valentine's Day <clears throat> is based on Lupercalia. It is not based on some St. Valentine, some made up story. Is based on a day called Lupercalia. And if you look up Lupercalia, it has something to do with murder, death. It's something about, um, let me look it up and show you all. These holidays that we celebrate are the traditions of men that make the power of God of non-effect, of no effect. They nullify and they void our ability to walk in the anointing. And this is why a lot of Christians, especially Christians from lukewarm churches or churches that are more earthly focused and not really biblically focused, those people have no power and very little victory because they hold the, tra the traditions or the things that they adhere to. They adhere to the traditions and not the word of God and not the teachings of the Bible. What is more important to their church structure and to their life, how they formalize their um, commitment to Jesus in their lives 
it's heavily based on their traditions, the things that their church founders established or installed or built the church upon and not upon the word of God. Let me check out Lupercalia. I'm going to try to do Lupercalia. Here it is, Lupercalia. Now, this is Valentine's Day. Lupercalia, Valentine's Day is based on Lupercalia. That's what it is. That's what Valentine's Day is based on. It is not based on some St. Valentine. Okay? And so... When you when you look at um, many of and so I let me let me go back. So I have these things here and so I can toss them because it'll be no no loss to me. You know, I could toss them and just be done with it, you know, um, because I now I am aware. So I really, you know, can shouldn't really have them. Right. Right. And so. I think a part of us gaining understanding is also gaining and establishing a commitment. And this is, I'm saying this to myself too, establishing a commitment to walk steadfast and steadily in our resolve. So once we gain an understanding of something, then, and we resolve to abstain or disengage from it, or whatever, then we have to um, understand what does that look like for us. Does it look like um, not buying candy or Valentine candy or Easter candy? Because, you know, I really, um, even for Easter, and I've made a couple of previous videos about Easter, I really... Um, I like the Easter story. I like the story of uh, the fact that Jesus resurrected from the dead. I like Easter, but the traditions that surround Easter are all pagan oriented. And so even um, April Fool, the April Fool Day is based on the fact that um, when Jesus April Fool. So Easter was that Friday. I think it was that last Friday in March. And so Jesus rose three days later. And I think if I'm thinking right, if I'm getting my facts straight. So the three days, April 1st would have been um, that third day. And Jesus was not there in the tomb. He had risen. And so April Fool's Day was designed or developed to say, to mock Jesus' resurrection and ascension or his resurrection because he had not yet ascended. So that day was established by pagans or whomever to mock the fact that those 500 Christians said that they saw Jesus walking the earth, you know, and the witnesses who went to the tomb and saw the stone rolled away and saw the cloth, uh, the burial cloth lying in the tomb, but no Jesus and the pagans or whomever made up the holiday April Fools as a mockery, making mockery of Christ's resurrection. So there are so many of these holidays that we celebrate that we really need to understand and then remove ourselves from them. And I believe that in doing so, we will allow God's word to take further, deeper root in our lives and manifest even more glory in our lives and, and give us command 
of victory over sin, death, and shame, and over the enemy of our souls. And, um, you know, so what will it look like? So, and we don't have to be legalistic, you know, but I think God gives us liberty and freedom to determine um, le- like w- at what level of engagement. So if you want to totally abstain, like I'm not even going to buy candy on that day because the candy may be associated with these idols, the idol of Lupercalia, the idols associated with that day or the idols associated with the April Fool's, um, you know, Easter candy stuff. And plus the candy, the eggs and all of that are um, related to uh, uh, f- um, fertility rituals um, for Easter. And so, you know, you know, birthday, Halloween, even the 4th of July for Independence Day. Independence Day, why the heck do all the um, fireworks sound like gun work, gun shots? And why is it that that day is glorifying gun battle? You know, that's what those fireworks represent. Gun battle, cannon fire, cannonball f- smoke and all that violence associated with, you know, war and fighting, revolutionary war, wars of independence, bloodshed, death. So, so yeah, y'all, this is another deep one. I'm on a roll, but I just wanted to share with you all because, you know, it's almost like, So how do you like, so my family, they still celebrate their birthday. So when they have a birthday, I say happy birthday to them. I try to refrain from sharing anything with candles. Like I, if I send them a picture or a card, I try to send something that says happy birthday with maybe streamers or something, maybe balloons, um, But I bet you the balloon, I bet you the balloon is a part of the air ritual or something. But I don't have clarity on that yet. So right now, if I send my family something, I try to send them something that I feel is neutral and it doesn't glorify paganism. Because I want them to know that I care enough about them to say happy birthday. But for me, I don't need people to prove that they care for me by saying happy birthday. I need people to prove that they care for me by honoring who I am as an individual, respecting me and respecting my name and my character and esteeming me, holding me in high esteem and honoring me while I'm alive and treating me with care and goodness. That's what I look for. And so in friends and relatives and in general people in my life, that's what I don't need people giving me gifts on any days. I mean, you can give me a gift on any day, but that is not what I'm looking for. And so instead, I would rather have honor, not worship, but respect, care, um, um, <clears throat> camaraderie or admiration, you know, every day. Or just people being kind, you know, just those basic civil etiquettes or etiquettes that we extend to one another. That's what I like. So, all right, 25 minutes. Lord, these videos are getting long. Y'all be blessed. Uh, Please thumbs up or down if you don't like. Leave a comment and engage each other in your thoughts. All right, be blessed.